Hey guys, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing okay. Going to give you a very thorough overview of the article here. There's a link in the description. Also going to play a video. It goes on for a minute and 30 seconds. It's not the best video. You're not going to see too much, but I will play the first 20 seconds, um, which will show you a little bit of the incident that we're going to discuss. So I'll just tell you a little bit about it, about the subject. First of all, if you appreciate the coverage, please do like, comment, subscribe. Share the video as you see fit. Let's have a look at the headline. A North Carolina high schools commission, so like a, the whole county of high schools within North Carolina, has cancelled volleyball games against one school in particular. That school is called Highland High, sorry, Highlands High in North Carolina. So why have the other schools refused to play volleyball against highlands high well the answer is because there was a match last month between highlands high and another team called hawassi dam and on highlands high the coach of the volleyball team thought it would be a really good idea to have a boy on the girls team play against the other school's team which were all biological girls if i understand correctly so why would the coach decide to put a boy on the uh, girls' volleyball team? Well, because the boy claims to be transgender. The boy is living as a girl. And uh, with that, we know that we must placate whatever it is that any trans person wants. Uh, so if that encompasses endangering girls that are just minding their own business playing some sports then so be it and that's exactly what happened in a game about a month ago between these two teams highlands high and hawassi dam the highlands high transgender player jumps up and performs a spike basically jumps up and smashes the ball down we'll see it in just one quick second the ball flies across the court strikes a girl uh, from the Hawassi Dam High team strikes her in the forehead she goes down this is a one and a half minute video she's down on the ground for the full length of the time she's properly hurt in fact she suffers severe head and neck injuries which results in long-term concussion symptoms including vision problems which she still has not recovered from fully at this point this happened roughly a month ago. So I'll play the first 20 seconds of this video. The rest of it, we'll just see her lying on the floor. So the trans player is going to be on the right-hand side. And the girl that gets hits in the head will be on the left-hand side. All right, so that was the incident. So I'm going to replay it. Perhaps I'll replay it a few times whilst I uh, go over the details. But yeah, I mean, essentially, this is volleyball teams, high school teams playing against each other. They're girl squads, apart from that one on the right hand side that we see run up. So they come, they start running up from about here. And um, it it's a boy, this one here, look, this one, this one, douche. Now, OK, fine. He, or rather, she is just playing a game of volleyball. But here's the deal, trans person. Here's the deal. I know you want to play volleyball. I know you do. Yeah? You're allowed to want to play volleyball. And I know that you want to present yourself as a girl. And you're allowed to do that. But. When you trans person, I'm speaking directly to the trans person, when you as a trans person, a boy, biological boy, living as a girl, when you play physical sports against actual biological girls, 
you bring to the table your superior physical strength. You're not able to leave your superior physical strength, your f- superior athletic ability. You're not able to leave that on the bench. You carry that with you. And that poses a danger when you play against those that are not physically capable to deal with your level of physical strength. Now, I'm not overly familiar with uh, volleyball. You might be surprised to learn that I'm not a doctor. You might be surprised to learn that I'm not a sports specialist. So I'm kind of guessing to an extent, but uh, to me, I mean, this girl has suffered severe head and neck injuries because presumably her head, her neck is not strong enough to cope with a volleyball struck towards the, her by a man or by a boy, yeah? I mean, it surprises me that a volleyball causes such injuries, but it has. Um, I guess there's room for it there to be other reasons involved. Perhaps the girl that's injured had some other medical issues we don't know but um i mean if we just look at things at face value this seems to be i'm gonna say a good example i mean it's it's not good in a lot of ways but it does seem to be a representative example of why since day dot since the the dawn of life why boys sports are separated from girl sports I don't need to tell you that boys generally almost always are stronger than girls physically. That's not a misogynist statement. That's not a bigoted statement. It's a statement of fact. I don't need to be a biologist or a a doctor or a sports specialist to be able to state that fact, to know those facts. I have a brain. I have eyes. I have experience. All of these things tell me that boys are stronger than girls, men are stronger than women. Are there exceptions to that? Yes, of course. Ronda Rousey will beat the poop out of most men, of course. Um, there are there are exceptions, but generally, by and large, a boy is stronger than a girl, a man is stronger than a woman, and to a very extreme level, to, to you know, if you're talking in physical sports or physical combat, a girl just cannot compete with a boy. A woman cannot compete with a man, apart from very rare exceptions. In regards to physical combat, any physical sport, they just can't compete. Men are stronger, they're faster, they're bigger, they're heavier. They have all of these physical attributes due to their hormones and, I don't know, chromosomes, whatever else, that determine them to be physically superior, maybe superior is not the right word, but certainly in a strength capacity, than women, than girls. So look, we just have to face those facts. And unfortunately, uh, the coach of... Highlands High decided to not face those facts. The coach at Highlands High decided, oh, you're a boy that wants to play on the girls' team? Well, you can get fucked, mate. You shouldn't... Oh, hang on. Sorry, my bad. You you th- view yourself as a girl even though you're a biological boy. Oh, you're transgender. You view yourself as being transgender. You're, <clears throat> you're uh, claiming to be under that specific label. Well, that being the case, yes, of course, you, you're you more than welcome to join the girls team and thus pose a physical risk to the opposition. You're more than welcome to do that, young lady, young man. That's what the coach decided to do. And I'm going to guess that the coach had the full support of the other sub- teachers of uh, the school board for Highlands High. That's my speculation. I don't know. I mean, it's just wrong, in my opinion. 
that doesn't make me a bigot. That just makes me somebody that is aware of the um, physical differences between males and females. And somebody that is empathetic towards the unnecessary injuries caused to girls and women in sports at the hands of uh, transgenders, uh, males to females, competing in sports against opposition that they should not be competing against. I'm empathetic towards this girl who has suffered severe head and neck injuries. This girl has suffered in long-term concussion symptoms, including vision problems. She's a fucking student. She's at school. We're not told how old she is. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, something like that. She's a young lady at school participating in sports being a good girl you know what i mean like um focusing on her self-development focusing on her health and whatever else whatever other benefits being a part of a um, sports team encompasses she's doing the right thing and despite doing the right thing she has faced severe injury and sure, there is the chance this, we could write this off. Oh, this is just one of those things. This is a freak accident. Could have happened if uh, a biological girl had smashed the ball into her head. Could have happened that way. Well, maybe there's some truth in that. Or maybe there isn't. Maybe the truth is we shouldn't pander to trans people or the trans army if there's good reason not to pander to them and in this case in my opinion and i'm allowed to have an opinion let's remember that in my opinion there is good reason not to pander to the trans person in this case and that reason is it poses a risk of physical harm to others and in this case that has actually happened and if i were the one to lay blame i would lay blame at whomever it is panders to the trans people on this issue so seemingly that includes the highlands high coach but whomever else it's not just that coach it's whomever else it's the other teachers it's the other students it's whomever else is a party to pandering and supporting this trans person this biological boy playing against biological girls Whoever allowed that to happen encouraged that. Bullied others to accept it. They're to blame. And I, I dare say that encompasses a lot of people. That's pretty much all the details that I want to go through. Um, I don't want to be branded a bigot. But if I am, then so be it. I don't know, man. I support yay. I support yay. To me, I like, like I mean, I like there are a lot of people that I like. I like free speech. I've been very vocal on the internet. Uh, not necessarily on this channel. I've been very vocal about a number of issues on other channels. I like to speak my mind. I make the occasional good point. I'm not, I don't articulate everything brilliantly. But sometimes I, I you know, can spit some things half decently. Um, other times not so much. But this is an info war. It is and it has been an info war. And to, uh, to me it feels like this info war has failed. The media, social media has proven itself to be too strong. In just booting anyone that it wants. Deplatforming. Uh, just removing accounts. Whenever it feels like it. And that's something that I've seen. And I've not wanted my accounts to be removed. So I've bit my tongue at times, and I've bit my tongue through this video to a degree, I think. But um, I don't know. I, I I really I feel a little bit empowered by what Ye has done over the last couple of days, and that's not to say that I support him or agree with um, his statements. I don't even know fully what his statements are or the meanings behind them fully. But um, he's taking on he's challenging isn't he he's saying things that we're not allowed to say 
and uh, you know he's saying, yeah, he's he's he's, he's tackling it tackling it head on, and he is able to throw up a long fight. I'm not able to throw up a long fight. If I say the wrong thing as a you know a small channel or whatever, if I say the wrong thing, I can just be flicked and forgotten about. That's it, you know, never to be heard of again. But Ye is in a position whereby if he's cancelled, he can come back. He can buy parlor. He can go on this podcast, that podcast. He can be interviewed by Piers, what's his name? Piers Morgan, you know. Ye is in a position to not only express his thoughts and opinions, but to repeat them in the face of severe rejection. He's able to do that because he, he has the power. He has the power to um, be invited onto these platforms he has the power to purchase these platforms uh, so he's he's in a uh, he's got that power power that we don't have and i'm thinking he's one of a handful of people that are, that are using that power and i hope he continues to do i feel a little bit empowered by him i've gone on a massive rant there but whatever gonna wrap things up uh, if I've done a half decent job, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Thanks.